Hello, and welcome back to Flying Failures, where we'll be looking at the Barda 152. The Barda 152 is officially Germany's first commercial jet airliner, but despite the position the unified nation now holds in the global aircraft industry, thanks to its part in the Airbus venture, the 152 was an airframe riddled with faults, the reasons for its failure having not been specified due to the division of the country during the Cold War. In World War II, as the Nazi war machine began to collapse in the face of the advancing Allies, the German homeland was eventually split between their victorious enemies, resulting in the formation of the Communist German Democratic Republic in the East and the Capitalist Federal Republic of Germany in the West, centre stage of the Cold War. The splitting of Germany at the end of World War II also saw many former Nazi scientists and designers either capture or defect to the two different factions, being offered clemency in exchange for designing and building new technology for their respective sides. On the Soviet side, renowned German engineer Bruno Bader, who had made a name for himself during the interwar years and the rise of the Nazi regime designing a number of passenger aircraft for the Bavarian Aircraft Works in Messerschmitt, was taken back to Russia in order to create a new jet bomber for the Soviet Union, supported by a design team comprised of both Germans and Russians. This team was designated the Opaknur Konstruktorskirbüro, or OKB, which translated to the Experimental Design Bureau, and were tasked to create the OKB-1150, one of Bader's designs for a subsonic nuclear jet bomber that he had originally drafted while working for Junkers during the closing stages of World War II, alongside the likes of the EF-131 and EF-140. The general layout of the OKB-1150 placed the wings atop the fuselage with two engines slung underneath, and the aircraft would be capable of travelling at 603 miles an hour over a 2,800 mile range, and with a service ceiling of 41,000 feet making it comparable to other bomber designs of the time, including the Boeing B-52. The OKB-1150 made its first flight on September 5, 1952, but its success was hampered by bad weather and a series of defects discovered during the trials, before it was eventually grounded after 17 flights on May 9, 1953, when the prototype crash-landed, and while this caused non-extensive damage, the aircraft was never repaired, and OKB was disbanded, with the German engineers being returned to East Germany and taking up residence in Dresden. However, Bader continued to toy with the concept, and chose instead to recreate the project as a passenger airliner for the Eastern Bloc, with a design largely identical to that of the OKB-1150, including high-mounted wings with engines slung underneath. The aircraft's military routes were evident in the fitting of a glazed nose for use by navigators and bombardiers, a common feature on Eastern Bloc airliners, so they could be quickly converted to military use in the event of war, while it also carried over centerline main gear on the fuselage and outrigger wheels on the wingtips, and the tail was based on the Ilyushin IL-14, a Soviet twin-piston engine propeller plane built under license in East Germany by the VVB Flugzeugbau. Construction of the aircraft began in 1956 at the VEB Flugzeugwerke factory in Dresden, and it was initially rolled out in mid-1958, with its first flight occurring on December 4th of the same year, and lasting approximately 35 minutes. At this point in the development, East German national carrier Deutsche Lufthansa had expressed interest in the 152 project, and proposed an entry into service of 1960, while promotional films showing passengers inside the plane were also made for propaganda purposes, but the reality was that none of the 152s ever built were fitted out with interior furnishings, and the films were instead made using a studio mock-up of the fuselage. The aircraft was able to fly at 572 miles an hour over a range of between 1,200 and 1,500 miles at an altitude of 41,000 feet, while the comparable Sud Aviation Carvel could only fly at 500 miles an hour over a range of 1,100 miles and at an altitude of 39,000 feet. Power was derived from four Perna 014 turbojet engines mounted in twin pods underneath the wings, and the aircraft could carry a maximum of 72 passengers, largely matching the Tupolev Tu-124 and in many respects it could outperform the Western Caravelle. However, tragedy struck the project on March 4, 1959, when the prototype, only on its second flight, crashed at Ottendorf or Krilla, killing the entire crew, while the circumstances surrounding the accidents have remained clouded in mystery, as the results of the investigation undertaken by the East German authorities was not made public after Germany was reunified in 1990, although the commonly held theory as to the cause was due to pilot error with the flight crew being unfamiliar with jet-powered airliners and thus accidentally putting the aircraft into an unrecoverable stall. Regardless, the project continued, with a second and third prototype being built in the same manner, the second prototype having a different landing gear configuration, with the main gear being mounted on the engines, while the third prototype was built to a minimal requirement, 
its only role being for ground testing of the avionics and systems, but in both cases the glazed nose was removed. Testing of the second prototype only occurred three times, after which all examinations and flights of the aircraft were abruptly cancelled, as it was found that during the third flight of the second prototype on September 7, 1960, there was a serious malfunction with the fuel tanks, interrupting sufficient fuel supply during steep descents, but whether or not this issue was responsible for the loss of the first prototype is a matter of debate. There were also problems with the stability of the nose gear, which is known to have collapsed on both the second and third flights. Regardless, all development and testing of the 152 was stopped immediately, even though 20 units had already been assembled for delivery to East German carrier Deutsche Lufthansa, and by the end of the year all units had been scrapped, with the future of East German aviation instead being fully dependent on the Soviet Union for the development and supply of airliners, with the Tupolev Tu-124 being promoted to East German carriers as an alternative. As for the remnants of the 152 project, the Perna 014 engines that were to be fitted to the production units were salvaged and placed into turbine-powered minesweepers used by the Volksmarine, while only one fuselage, number 11, has survived to the present day. Fuselage 11 was initially used as a storeroom by the East German Army, before eventually ending up as a chicken coop in a farm outside Dresden, where it was rediscovered in 1993, being bought by the Elbe Flugzeugwerke, successor to VEB Flugzeugwerke, in association with the Werkes Museum Dresden, and has been restored and preserved as a standalone exhibit at Dresden Airport, the last reminder of Germany's first, but ultimately unsuccessful, jet airliner endeavour. <laughs>